Hi, I'm Rick Burnett from Erogenous Tones, and I'm here to talk to you about GateStorm, our new advanced gate generating Eurorack module. GateStorm brings together a bunch of different gate generating concepts into one single monolithic design. So what do we mean by that? Well, traditionally people would use a bunch of different modules to generate and manipulate their gates. This would require a lot of cross patching, a lot of different UIs, and a lot of CV relationships that were hard to keep track of. So with GateStorm, we looked at how are we going to make a module so that we can manipulate and change gates on the fly, definitely for a live performance setting. And what other features can we add to that with a monolithic design that other systems are able to utilize? So one of those things is a comprehensive random system that allows you to randomize settings to experiment with what you have or to use those for live performance as well. In addition to that, we have a preset system so that you can recall presets of the settings and be able to use those and manipulate those on the fly. So with a monolithic design, it allows us to really push the boundary of what you can do with gate generation quickly. In addition to that, one thing you'll notice is that GateStorm has a very expansive UI on the front of it. Everything that GateStorm is doing can generally be seen on this main page. There are other pages that can show you more detail when you're getting into some of the other settings, but for most work that you're going to do, this is the page that you're going to look at, and you can quickly see what GateStorm is doing. So what does GateStorm actually do? Well, before we dive into that, let's just talk about the general use of gates in a Eurorack setup to begin with. Now, gates can be used for a variety of different things, but instead of diving into every single possible use, let's look at a few of the most common uses for gates. So, first thing is, people like to trigger drum modules. Another usage is triggering envelopes. And one fun thing to do is to trigger different envelopes with different gate patterns and mixing those together with a mixer. Another use is advancing sequences. So with a pattern-based gate generator, you can advance those sequences with a rhythmic pattern instead of just with a straight clock. And finally, one of the most common uses is clock generation. And with GateStorm allowing you to do multiplication or division of a master clock, you can generate all kinds of different clock relationships. So how does GateStorm fit into all these different gate uses? Well, let's go through a simple overview of what GateStorm provides. And in the following videos, we'll go in and start exploring these different features. GateStorm has eight gate outputs, and those outputs are generated internally through a variety of different methods. So let's look at those different methods. First, we have complex lanes. We have four of them. And a complex lane means that you can set a pattern between one and 16 steps, and each of those steps you can control whether they're on or off. All four of the lanes are independent, can have their own lengths. We also have four simple lanes. Simple lanes are basically just clocks. Now, the difference is, is that you can change the density setting of those between zero and 100%. What does that mean? Well, that means that you can control how often a clock pulse is generated. Now, both of these, complex and simple, can be fed through four different logic lanes. And the logic lanes allow you to combine those signals in different ways to generate even new patterns. Now, on top of all that, all of the settings for the complex, simple, and logic lanes are controllable with CV voltages. We have six CV ins. And the beauty is, is that they're not tied to any one particular setting. You can change multiple things on multiple lanes in multiple directions with those CV controls, and they're very easy to set up. GateStorm has six trigger inputs. These inputs are divided into two sets. Four of them are what's known as local triggers that work with just the complex lanes. Two of them are global triggers and they work with everything. 
So triggers are used for resetting patterns, randomizing patterns, or with the complex lanes, initiating a one-shot, which means the pattern will play through once. In the top left of GateStorm is a clock input and a tap tempo button. GateStorm has a clock sampling system. What that means is that if you're using a different master clock, GateStorm will constantly measure the timing and synchronize itself to the rising edge of that clock. But you can use GateStorm as your master clock as well. GateStorm works from between 20 BPM and 400 BPM. If you exceed 400 BPM, GateStorm will actually automatically divide the incoming clock so that you're always at a multiple of whatever that clock is coming in. Below the graphic interface of GateStorm are the interface controls to make changes to the settings. The first row of eight buttons are used to change things like turning steps on and off or making selections in some of the menus. The next six buttons are used to switch between the different menus. Between those buttons is a rotary encoder, which also has an integrated button that is used to bring up the system settings or a variety of other things that you can do with it. Finally, there's one button on the bottom right that is used to switch between the main display and the CV mod matrix. So that was a general overview of some of the features and functionality that GateStorm provides. In the next video, we're going to dive in and start creating our own patterns, and I'm going to show you how to manipulate those with the GateStorm. Thanks for watching.